Hey everyone, welcome to my special D23 News Roundup. I will be discussing all the Marvel, Star Wars, and Disney news from D23, as well as some of the news since then. But I will warn you right now, there's a lot of news I've missed because these notes have been written and completed for a while and they haven't been updated in, I think, a month, maybe even two months. So there's a ton of news I am going to miss that I will discuss next News Roundup. Let's just start with the Disney Animation and Pixar news. Um, we'll start with Pixar's Elemental, which we actually just got a trailer for, I think, yesterday. But we'll talk about that in the next News Roundup. But Elemental focuses on a love story between a fire girl and a water man who can't touch. Leah Lewis and Mama Duethi will voice Ember and Wade, the main characters. Uh, this sounds pretty cool. Of course, Pixar is one of the best studios out there in terms of consistency. So I'll look forward to whatever they do. Um, I'm not too familiar with Leah Lewis, but Mama Duethi is one of the better parts of Jurassic World Dominion, which is a movie I did not like, but he was good in it, so I'm looking forward to this. Next up, uh, Pixar's first full-length series for Disney+, Plus, Win or Lose, has cast Will Forte as Coach Dan. The series follows a softball team, but each episode focuses on a different member of the team, showing their point of view of the same week with different animation styles. And this one definitely is one of my most anticipated, is one of the ones that interests me the most. I really like the concept art they showed. I like Will Forte. I'm looking forward to this. And I really like hearing that each episode will be a different animation style. I'm a big fan of that idea, and I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Pixar's next original film, titled Elio, is focused on aliens. It follows an 11-year-old child who can't fit in, meets aliens, and becomes the ambassador for Earth. America Ferreira will voice Elio's mom, Olga. Um, and this sounds pretty interesting. I'm always excited to see Pixar tackle science fiction. Obviously, I'm a big sci-fi guy, so I'm looking forward to this. Next up, probably the biggest Pixar news is that Inside Out 2 is happening. Amy Poehler is returning as Joy. And this was definitely a surprise. I'm torn. On one hand, the original was so good that I don't want a sequel. I think that's how a lot of people reacted. But on the other hand, a sequel does have a lot of potential with uh, the main character, I can't remember her name, being a teenager and exploring all those crazy teenage emotions. There's a lot of potential there, and this could turn out to be great, but I don't know if they'll be able to recapture that lightning in a bottle that the first one was, but I'm looking forward to it. Next up, they discussed Zootopia Plus a little bit, which is a six-episode anthology series releasing this November, so it's already released on Disney+. Plus. And it follows various members of Zootopia, including the sloth. Um, obviously, this is out already on Disney+. Plus. I did not watch it. It doesn't interest me much, but I'm sure it's cute and it'll work for the target audience. Next up, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, Dennis Quaid, uh, Gabrielle Union, Lucy Liu, and a bunch more will star in Strange World, the next Walt Disney Animation release. I believe the movie comes out, I think, in a few days. It's coming out really soon. It's getting positive reviews. There's a new trailer for the movie. And this looks really good. Again, more sci-fi, which I love. I love the wacky creature design, the retro feel. The animation, of course, looks beautiful. The cast is great. And I'm looking forward to this movie. Next up, Disney and Kugali's Iwaju is described as a futuristic coming-of-age story about best friends Tola and Cole. Of everything we've talked about, this is definitely my most anticipated animated project from Disney. The Afrofuturism, the partnership between Disney and Kugali, the new animation style... This seems like it could be something completely unique, completely original, something completely different, and uh, it has a lot of potential, and I just can't wait. Finally, Disney announced a new animated movie called Wish. The film follows Asha, who sees darkness and the kingdom of wishes and decides to wish on a star that comes to life. Wish will blend a watercolor style with 3D animation. Ariana DeBose will voice Asha. Alan Tudyk will voice Valentino the Goat. And Julia Michaels is writing songs for the movie. Um, this also sounds really cool. I'm glad to see more original projects since a lot of what they did talk about was sequels and continuations. But what excites me the most about this is the voice cast. Ariana DeBose, uh, extremely talented, obviously fantastic, uh, won the Oscar last year for West Side Story. And also Alan Tudyk is a great actor. I'm a fan of his. And I think this has a lot of potential and I'm looking forward to it. Next up, uh, let's move on from Disney Animation from Pixar, and let's move on to Disney Live Action and 20th Century Studios. Uh, first of all, Barry Jenkins' live action Lion King prequel is titled Mufasa, the Lion King. It'll follow the rise of Mufasa and feature young versions of characters Timon, Pumbaa, and Rafiki. 
Billy Eichner and Seth Rogen will return as Timon and Pumbaa. And I wouldn't normally care about this. This doesn't really interest me, except for the fact that Barry Jenkins is directing. There must be something about this story that interested him. I don't think he would do this unless there was something about it. And I'm really excited to see what that is. Jamie Lee Curtis and Winona Ryder have been cast in Disney's live action Haunted Mansion movie. This is pretty cool. Obviously, both of them are fantastic actors. This movie has a great cast, and I'm looking forward to seeing what it'll be. Next up, we know that uh, Sigourney Weaver plays one of Soli's kids in Avatar The Way of the Water. Stephen Lang is returning as the same character, and Avatar 4 has begun filming. Uh, there have also been two new Avatar 2 trailers that we'll talk about next news roundup, but this is very cool. I don't have much to say besides never doubt James Cameron. I think we're all going to be really surprised at just how great Avatar 2 is, and I am very excited for it. We got a first teaser for the Percy Jacksons and the Olympians Disney Plus show, and this was solid. Disney Plus hasn't had many scripted TV shows outside of Marvel and Star Wars that have interested me, um, because most just aren't that good, and I'm really hoping this breaks the trend. There's a lot of potential here, and hopefully this show lives up to it. Next up, we got the trailer for National Treasure, Edge of History, which is uh, the Disney Plus show. And this looks fine. The trailer didn't do much for me. I might give the show a try, but I think I'm going to need them to give me a little bit more of a reason to watch it. I'm definitely much more looking forward to the National Treasure movie they have in development more than this show. Next up, we got our first teaser trailer for The Little Mermaid. And this one actually surprised me. I had zero expectations, and this looks great. This looks really good. The underwater scenes look good. I think they were smart to play on the heartstrings with that music. Halle Bailey looks incredible as Ariel. She can clearly sing. Um, I'm looking forward to this a lot more than I expected to. This has the potential to be one of the best live action Disney remakes. Um, obviously, that's not a very high bar, but hopefully this uh, breaks the streak of pretty bad ones. Um, what else? They also released trailers for Hocus Pocus 2 for Disenchanted. Both of those movies are now out on Disney+, Plus, so you can watch them if you want to. Moving on from that, let's now focus on the Marvel stuff. Anthony Ramos will be playing The Hood in Ironheart, which has also added Shakira Barrera, and the show has been described as dealing with magic versus science, and this is really cool. Anthony Ramos, great actor. Him as The Hood is awesome casting. I cannot wait to see him in the role. I'm looking forward to seeing who Shakira Barrera is playing. And just the idea of this show, magic versus science, uh, just very exciting. There's a lot of potential here, and I'm really, really looking forward to it. At this point, I have seen Black Panther Wakanda Forever, but I'm going to save my thoughts on Ironheart, save my thoughts on Dominique Thorne for my review of that movie. So I'm not going to talk about that. Next up, Randall Park is returning as Jimmy Woo in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Um, this is pretty cool. He was great in WandaVision, so I'm looking forward to this. Eugene Cordero is returning in Loki Season 2, and Kei Hoi Kwan has joined the cast. I feel like we might have talked about this one before, but now it's officially confirmed, and this is awesome. This is one of my favorite pieces of news. First of all, good for Eugene Cordero. He was really funny in Season 1. He was great. I'm looking forward to seeing more of him. But Kei Hoi Kwan, phenomenal actor. If you haven't seen Everything Everywhere all at once, you have to. Um, I gave it a very positive review, but I feel like I wasn't positive enough. That movie just gets better and better the more I think about it. It's one of my favorite movies of all time, and he is phenomenal in it. The fact that he is joining the MCU, the fact that he's joining the MCU in Loki is awesome. I cannot wait. Um, this is definitely one of my favorite pieces of news coming out of D23, and uh, I love this so much. And this does so much to raise my excitement for Loki season two. This is awesome. Next up, we learn that Tim Blake Nelson is returning as the leader in Captain America New World Order, which has also added Danny Ramirez as the new Falcon, Shira Haas as Sabra, and Carl Lumley as Isaiah Bradley will be returning, and uh, director Julius Ona, who I think we talked about when he came on as director, but I can't remember, um, but he described it as a paranoid thriller. First of all, Tim Blake Nelson making his return is great. Um, I'm so glad to see that loose thread getting picked up on Danny Ramirez as Falcon. Um, we talked about with Falcon and Winter Soldier. We all saw it coming, but I'm looking forward to seeing it. Uh, I'm looking forward to learning about the character of Sabra because I know nothing about her and I'm not familiar with Shira Haas. Carl Lumley returning is great. He was great in Falcon and Winter Soldier. 
And the fact that this is a paranoid thriller is awesome. I'm really looking forward to this movie and hopefully it can live up to the standards set by the Captain America movies because I think that's the best trilogy of Marvel movies. Next up, uh, The Marvels focuses on the three heroes as they keep trading places with each other every time they use their powers and then they must team up to fix the problem. Goose the Flurkin will return. Uh, this is pretty cool. It explains that Miss Marvel post credit scene. Cool premise. I'm looking forward to the movie. Not much else to say besides that. Of course, Marvel has officially announced the Thunderbolts movie. Uh, cast in the movie are Sebastian Stan, Florence Pugh, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, Hannah John Kamen, Wyatt Russell, and Olga Kurilenko, and David Harbour. I really like this lineup for the most part. I will say there are two notable absences, Abomination and Zemo. Uh, Zemo hates superheroes, so I can see him being the villain of this movie. I don't think he would fit in on the team, but I do hope he's in this movie. And then Abomination, I have no idea. Uh, they left this story in an interesting place in She-Hulk, and I'm just very curious to see where they go with him. But I'm hoping they end up being a part of this movie, and they just haven't revealed it yet. But the cast that is there, fantastic. I'm really looking forward to this movie. Sounds very cool. I'm excited to see what they have in store. The big news, uh, Hugh Jackman returning as Wolverine in Deadpool 3. Obviously, what can I say that hasn't been said before? This is amazing. The first two Deadpool movies are really fun, really enjoyable, hilarious. The Hugh Jackman-Ryan Reynolds rivalry is very entertaining. Hugh Jackman is great as this character. Um, I'm excited to see him in this movie. I can't wait for the Logan jokes, the Disney jokes, the MCU jokes. I think it's going to be hilarious, and uh, this is just great. Next up, we got our writer for Kang Dynasty, uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania writer Jeff Loveness will be penning the script. This is pretty cool. This is definitely a good sign for Quantumania. If Marvel was such a fan of his work on that movie that they hired him for an Avengers movie, that's a pretty massive endorsement. So I'm looking forward to what he does for both of these projects. Next up, we've got our writers for Fantastic Four. Jeff Kaplan and Ian Springer will write the movie. And same thing here. There's not much to say besides the fact that this is very cool. I'm not familiar with Kaplan and Springer, but I'm very excited to see what they do. Here's a piece of kind of outdated news, but Blade lost its director. Bassam Tariq is no longer directing the movie. There's all these rumors about Faye stretched too thin, Mahershala Ali frustrated. Of course, this is a huge bummer. The movie will probably be delayed. Um, but since I wrote this in my notes, we now know who the new director is. We know who the new writer is. Seems like things are back on track, which is great. And we'll talk about that next news roundup. Next up, Armor Wars is being reconceived as a movie rather than a Disney Plus series. Um, this is pretty cool. I don't have a preference for what medium it is, as long as it's good. So I'm looking forward to Armor Wars, and I'm excited to see it and review it. I was going to talk about the Werewolf by Night trailer, but at this point, I've already seen Werewolf by Night. What I was going to say was, I love the trailer, I love the cast, I love the old 50s hammer horror movie retro feel. I would have said, this looks amazing and I can't wait to see it. And now that I've seen it, I can tell you it is amazing and I can't wait to review it. So look out for my review, Werewolf by Night is great and I loved it. Next up, we got a trailer for Secret Invasion which was also a fantastic trailer, visually looked great. The ensemble cast is awesome. Um, the tone, gritty, intense, grounded, uh, looks like a full political spy thriller, which I can't wait. I love that genre. This is definitely my most anticipated Marvel TV show. I can't wait. Really looking forward to it. Moving on from Marvel, let's close off with the Lucasfilm news. We've got a bunch of casting for The Acolyte. Jodie Turner-Smith, Lee Jung-jae, Manny Jacinto, and Charlie Barnett are all joining Amanda Stenberg in The Acolyte. Um, wow, this cast is phenomenal. Every single one of these people I'm a fan of are extremely talented actors. I wouldn't have named them to be in a Star Wars project, but now that I think about it, they just all perfectly fit. Cannot wait for this. Next up, we got our casting for Ezra Bridger. Uh, Eman Esfandi has been cast. This is awesome news. We knew Ezra was going to be in Ahsoka. It was just a matter of time. I'm not familiar with Iman Esfandi, but he looks exactly like Ezra. He fits the part physically, and I'm very excited to see what he brings to the role. Um, I'm very excited for Ahsoka, which is basically just Rebel Season 5, but really looking forward to it. This is great news. Next up, we got some information on Bad Batch Season 2. 16 episodes long, two-episode premiere on January 14th. Really looking forward to this. 
I actually recently went and I rewatched Bad Batch season one, and it was so much better the second time. I'll definitely talk a lot more about my updated thoughts before season two comes out, but my opinions on it have shifted so much from my original reviews. We got a trailer for Tales of the Jedi. Of course, at this point, Tales of the Jedi is out, and I'm going to be reviewing it soon, but it was a great trailer. I love that trailer. We got a trailer for uh, Mandalorian Season 3. This is also a fantastic trailer. Visually, looks really great. Seeing the destruction of Mandalore is awesome. Full-on Mandalorian Wars, I'm very excited for. Bo-Katan, with a much better wig, by the way, is awesome. She's being teased as a major player this season, maybe as the antagonist. Can't wait for that. Lots of Mandalorians picking up on that Darksaber storyline. All of that I can't wait for. I love the music in this trailer. I've missed this show a lot, and I'm very excited for its return. Finally, Christian Slater has joined Willow, which also received a new trailer. And I continue to be surprised with just how good this show looks. Maybe it's my own bias, but I keep thinking that it's going to be mainly for kids, but it keeps surprising me. It's not Game of Thrones, of course, and it'll definitely be a family show, but it looks really good. It looks like they put a lot of money into this. It had some budget. It has a good cast, and I'm I'm genuinely really excited for Willow. I'm definitely going to watch it. But that is all the major Marvel, Star Wars, and Disney news coming out of D23. We've got a lot more to cover, so expect more news roundups soon. But what do you think of all this? What are you most excited for? What's your favorite piece of news? Let me know in the form, the comments, the email, or the voicemail. All those links are in the description. And thank you so much for listening, and have a good day.